YTD wipes the snacking slate clean and tries to put a less than delicious year behind as the boys enter 2022 in search of the greatest snacks on the planet. First up, a trio of competitors from the Far East will put their hats into the ring. So sit back and turn up the volume because it's time to find out if you tried it! Try Dead. 2022 is here at last. I'm Nick Novak on my pals. Chad Hancock. Howdy. Nick Iger. Hello. It's a new year, guys. It is. Wow. Odd Lang Syne. <laughs> so different than last year, I can tell already. Yeah. Happy New Year, gents. Can you believe they they cured the pandemic on New Year's Eve? Yeah. That's a really under the gun. 59. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Let's party. Yeah. Um, so I was at work at lunch and a bunch of people eating lunch together uh, in the break room and, um, we're always just joking around laughing. And one of the, some of them know this podcast exists. Some of them did not. One that does not says this lunch is so great. We should start a podcast. We'll just record what we do here and, and uh, have it be a podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. And of course, it'd be the worst podcast ever. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm already unsubscribed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she goes, oh, but Nick should run it. But I'm not sure his voice is very good for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <It's> not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and another another person, my friend Carolyn, who listens goes she's right <laughs> <Just looks at me. laughs> and then later said you should um you should uh tell joanne about the podcast she would really like it um she said well she wouldn't like the part where you guys talk about your dicks all the time but she liked the other 40 percent. 40 percent. that's generous <laughs> i saw our categorization on iTunes and we were in the Dick Talk podcast section. <laughs> it wasn't even a food food podcast. Yeah, that's not where I submitted it to. Trust me. Yeah. They, uh, the AI auto-categorized it. <laughs> it's a competitive category. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's lots of Dick Talk. <laughs> Trust me. I think 99% of podcasts are in that category, actually. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Gagger. Yeah. Um, 2022 is all about the year of the pet, I believe. Yeah. What yes. animal is 2022? Do we know? Uh, you talking about on like the Chinese zodiac? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'll oh, wait. It. Let's see if it's a pet. Is it a pet? I mean, I don't even think there is pets on the Chinese yeah. Tiger. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, pet. Yeah. So, the pet. best pet, Tiger. <laughs> the <laughs> the apex I mean, pet. Right. We've all seen the documentaries, Tiger King. All about <laughs> Perfect. Investigating pets. tigers. Nothing happened wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gagger, okay, you, you had another story about an inappropriate pet relationship so don't frame it like that well i guess i framed it like that but yeah that's the uh, exact word you told me <laughs> so like owning a tiger is an inappropriate pet relationship that is exactly. absolutely yeah. true yeah that is not what this is about uh so we have a dog and a cat in our house and mm-hmm. i fuck my dog no uh and <laughs> we <laughs> the cat was someone that like i we didn't intend on owning a cat we found him in the bushes and like rescued him out of someone's van and uh like we end up t- taking him in wait which yeah. of those two things you either found him in a bushes in the bushes we, or got him out of someone's van the van no, was in the both. bushes yeah the van was parked in the bushes. No, uh there was a pet store in the bushes <laughs> like a landscape <laughs> <laughs> no it was well my dog was going nuts at the next door house like from the front window and i couldn't figure out why it was my old dog and uh there's a little, little tiny kitten just mewing in the in the in the bushes i said oh that's cute and then he ran into my neighbor's like up underneath my neighbor's van like up from the bottom of the chassis like he hid in the engine and animals do that during winter a lot because they can stay warm there but it's dangerous because obviously they start the car and they kill themselves so i asked him to pop the hood and i tried to get it out and it got away and so my son now really is engaged in this and so we're running after the cat in the neighborhood and he like hid in a storm drain i tried to pull it out he got away again Mm-hmm. Uh, Betsy told my son that she sh- he should lure the cat in with food. So he's laying pieces of lunch meat ham on the sidewalk. And I'm like, no, it's pick that up. That's no, we're going to get like <laughs> coyotes and shit out here. So vagabonds uh, just coming down the street like mm, <laughs> yeah, lunch. 
<laughs> you know, fat guys just making sandwiches out of it. So, <laughs> bunch of bunch, <laughs> bunch of homeless people just crawling out of van engine blocks, like oh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of creatures do it during the winter. Uh, so anyway, long story short, he ran in the van again, and I said, "Hey, one more time, can you pop the trunk?" And I just grabbed it by the leg, pulled him out, threw him in a cat carrier or a dog carrier. Mm-hmm. And we actually had to go up to see my my grandmother, and it was like Friday afternoon, so all the shelters were closed. So over the weekend, I had a Packer game to go to, so I went there while my wife like and kids took care of the kitten over the weekend. And, of course, inevitably, it wound into them begging me to keep it, and we did. Um, one of what the about funny- the cat stick? Uh, the cat <laughs> is a dude. I have not seen its dick, but we I've need the AI it's... to reclassify us from the dick podcast category to the animal <laughs> dick podcast category. Less competition there. Yeah. So if you could describe his foreskin in detail, I would appreciate it. <laughs> we... So we named my cat Horsecock. Uh, no. In order to qualify, we need at least twenty five percent of this episode to be <laughs> animal cock. <kind. laughs> Um, anyway, so one of the funnier things actually, cause when I was at, at the game, I kept getting these texts, like reasons we should keep the cat. They wrote like they, like my kids made a list, um, but they can't fucking spell. So they wrote like, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a <laughs> well behaved. Yeah. <laughs> the school system. I don't get paid to teach. Sorry. It's a, like, a. You know, they are, you know, he's calm or they said he's a good cat. He's not chipped because we did manage to get him to a vet to make sure he had no like diseases and he wasn't already spoken for. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then they wrote, he's clam, meaning he's calm. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to name the cat clam, but we, we, didn't, we weren't able to put that through. So anyway. And then so the last bullet point, giant dong. But <laughs> yeah, that yeah, one was yeah. spelled correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant dog. I was like very confused. <laughs> He's like, no, dong, like penis. I'm like, oh, yeah, now it makes sense. Oh, you've been listening. Okay. <laughs> That's actually how I pulled him out of the engine with by his dick. It was like, I thought it was his tail, and then it got real hard. Um, okay. <laughs> you, okay, you wanted anyway. the dick talk. You it asked too far. <laughs> okay. Arbiter. It's good until the cat got aroused. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings me to the story now. Uh so this week, my wife has always kind of tolerated the cat. She's not a cat person. She doesn't necessarily like him, but she doesn't mind him. He's kind of innocuous. But she was really casually telling us the story the other day. Now, our cat is very friendly. He likes to be pet, but he doesn't like to be picked up. Some cats, you can pick them up and hold them and carry them around and stuff. This cat does not I, like that. I, mean, I wonder why. Maybe the trauma of getting ripped out of an engine block by his <laughs> Achilles. I saved that fucking thing's life. He got it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, uh, so he, yeah, he didn't, he doesn't like being picked up. So we're like talking with my in-laws cause they were over the other night and Betsy real casually was like, yeah, no, the cat doesn't like getting picked up. Like I was in the bathroom, you know, uh, going to the bathroom the other day and the cat came in the, in the bathroom cause the cat can open our doors. He knows that if he leans on the handle, the door will flip open. He'll come wow. in. Wow. Yeah. He's it's like a velociraptor cat. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I can teach my cat to open doors and not my kids to spell cl- calm. Uh, <laughs> so my wife just casually mentions, yeah, and then he came in. So I like picked him up and put him on my lap and he got really like freaked out. And I'm like, hold up. You were on the <laughs> toilet with your pants down and you put the cat in your lap. Mm-hmm. And she goes, yeah, what's the big deal? And she thought this was like no problem. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of had a mini debate over whether that was weird or not. I think I vote weird. I think if I'm taking a sh- like, obviously the version for a male would be taking a shit. Right. I think she was just peeing. Okay. Not that she wants the whole world knowing that, but anyway, it's out now. Um, but like, <laughs> I wouldn't put like my child or a cat or like something on my lap while I'm taking a dump. That's weird. I think. Where do you guys I think land? The, the clarifying issue is is what whether it was number two or number one. I don't actually think it's that weird if it if she's peeing because it's kind it of was like number one. Yeah, so that's like a more casual act. It's a yeah. little cleaner, right? A uh, little more sterile. Uh, sure. If she's taking a massive shit, then uh, that's maybe <laughs> why the cat was, didn't want to be up there because it's like smells <laughs> awful trying to get off the lap. Uh, yeah, that's where I that's where I come. I think I actually think I agree because if I was sitting, I would not be holding my kid or an animal, but. I do even think that I probably have peed like holding like a months old infant. Mm-hmm. 
Um, okay, it's also like, well, yeah, it's your baby. It's like a little different, right? Like, why would you? Like, you don't have to put the cat on your lap. You, I can see you holding the baby because you had to. Right, you're right. What That's need do you have to put the cat on your lap? The yeah, it's not like the cat no jumps up there, right? I right. Know, keep, keeps keeps the lap warm. <laughs> I, uh, she wanted clam use... to cover her clam. <laughs> <laughs> I use Napoleon as a blanket every time I'm uh, taking a piss. So, you know, <laughs> you, you piss sitting down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, yes. And this is how I know I'm getting old. Is that like I like when I wake up at like 4 a.m. or something like that, and I have to piss. I don't have enough energy at that time of night to piss standing up anymore. And I just what? go in. What? I just go into the bathroom. <laughs> I sit down. I'm like half asleep, just pissing into the toilet. And then, uh, yeah. So, so that happens a lot. You don't have energy to stand. You... <laughs> Aren't you going to need to wake up and take care of infants? <laughs> How did your daughter make it this far? <laughs> I guess well, I you know need... your infant's going to be sitting in your lap while you piss. Unlike you guys, I don't pick up my infants while I'm peeing, right? Like, I can uh-huh. pee yeah. and then go take care take care of the infant. How long so. are you peeing for that it's like the effort is insurmountable? I don't know, like a minute and a half, something like that, two minutes. Hmm. Speed up your pee. A minute and a half? Yeah, that's a, a long ass pee. minute and a half? <laughs> <laughs> how, much, how big is your bladder? Does it cover half of your interior? <laughs> I'd have to sit down too, <laughs> dragging myself across the ground. Do my Christmas shopping. Bring a book. Two gallons of liquid. <laughs> it definitely. Oh, I mean, I had to start sitting down because it used to be when I was standing, I would shoot across the room like a deflating balloon. <laughs> a minute and a. Now it all makes sense. A minute. And a... <laughs> I get really cold. That's why I need the Napoleon blanket. All right. <laughs> All right, so the verdict is it's not weird, according to you guys. I'll relent if you guys agree. Uh, I'm not going to judge people what they do on the toilet. I mean, that's... (laughs) Oh, oh, yeah? Okay. Okay. (laughs) Let's not go that far. I will judge some things that people do on the toilet. Yeah. Uh, But I am not going to judge this particular. Okay. I mean, there was a point when looking at the phone, at your cell phone, on the toilet seemed out of line. Now I'd struggle to find people who... Okay. Now it's the highlight of my day. That is another fantastic point, because... If you try to pee and you're looking at the at your phone with your other hand, like the chances of you dropping that phone into the toilet are much higher than if you're sitting while you pee. So another great argument for sitting while you pee. You can do more stuff on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> you won't miss out on any deals. That- <laughs> yeah. Look, guys, I can see all the tweets while I'm pissing and sitting down. <laughs> In the in the four hours it took me to piss, like Chad, I got all my Black Friday shopping done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's let's eat some snacks now. Right. We just had the Mount Snackmore episode, and uh, we discovered that last year we didn't eat all that many tasty uh, snacks. So we've got to turn things around. Yep. I'm hoping to do it right out of the gate here. Um, I need to pull up. The whole list of these snacks. Yeah. <laughs> so I know. Um, let's eat the uh, chocolate pies first. This is the is pie, pie no me chocolate pies. That's what I was wondering. Is it pie it's no me that... or is it pie no my? Where like they want it to rhyme. I don't know. It was uh, hard to even find what it was. I had to like do a lot of Googling because it's all in Japanese. But yeah. But it, if you're looking it up at home, it's spelled like the word pie, like the food and then. Just regular no and M I. Was this like a big bag of these? Because they're they're individually wrapped like two Yeah. yeah two hexa two hexagon shaped sandwich cookies, kinda or crackers yeah. or something. They almost yeah, What's they almost the look like chocolate? little hexagonal saltines with like a glaze on top. And then I think inside is uh chocolate filling. Hmm. Yeah, this is like a one side has a some kind of a hard Mm. Almost like caramel co- colored uh, covering on it. They're kind of like puff pastry ish, but crunchy. Yeah, they feel they're like almost croissant flaky in a way, the pastry. But like, yeah, like mm. harder. Like many, it looks like there's many layers to the pastry. And then like a very thin layer of chocolate on the inside. So, one good thing of trying snacks from uh, other countries when we do it is that 
is when we get something like this that doesn't match up with really any anything that we have here in the yeah. United States. I can't think of any snacks like this. It's not ruining like a classic because we don't know what it is. And the and the usually when we get snacks from these other countries too, the chocolate has a different taste to it, which yeah. uh, can be kind of like re- a refreshing change. All right, Geiger, what do you think of the pie no my? Um, I really like it actually. Um, it's kind of light and airy, like we talked about. It's not real like heavy. A lot of times, the, what makes these things cruddy is the cookie is it can't be that good. You know, it's got to be preserved for a while, and it's like crunchy or hard or bland i thought it was like just enough little light flavoring on the top to be good and i liked the consistency a lot it was like a kind of a airy cracker almost and the chocolate's good like chad said the chocolate tastes a little different than what you might normally get it was like a kind of like a dark a darker chocolate or whatever and maybe i'm making that up but it just tasted different for some reason i don't know maybe the cocoa just like percentage is different but um like i ate two and it's not like i feel all Heavy afterward, I could eat a bunch of these. Um, I'm debating. Wow, you starting this starting the year off with a bang here? Now, don't overcompensate for your shitty ratings last year, okay? No, I, that's why I'm <laughs> that's why I'm concerned. I I do need to start opening up with the love a little bit if I really do like something. But I'm going to give this. I'll start it off with a strong like. I think these are very good, and I enjoyed the flavor and I enjoyed the consistency. And so, there's nothing else to really comment on. Chen. Uh, they are good, but they, they are not great. Uh, first of all, I think they're too, they're a little too dry. Um, and I think there needs to be a little bit more chocolate. And actually I kind of didn't like it at first because the, the first one is right. There's two in the pack. The first one I, I bit halfway through so I could see the layers. And then when you do that, you like kind of don't really get any chocolate. The second one, I put the entire thing in my mouth and ate it all at once. And I think that was a better ex- way to experience this because you get sort of like all that chocolate. It mixes around much better in your mouth. But even with that, I mean, the the flavor of this is not like mind blowing or anything like that. Like, it's fine. Like, I could snack on it. Um, not going to kick it out of bed. Um, so I am going to give this a very like kind of a low level like that. OK, Um the, the the first the, the issues with this one is that there's not enough chocolate like Chad said. Mm-hmm. Um, second would kind of be the presentation. I would probably fi- want to snack on these like I would some kind of a cheese, you know, something that's smaller. And I wouldn't want to keep unwrapping packs of two. Great point. Over and over. So I think they probably need to be put into a bigger bag. Um, but the good points, I really like how light it is. I think that's nice. Uh, that little bit of glaze on top is pretty good. Um, I think it's pretty well done. Not great. If it had significantly, like almost twice as much chocolate, I could see that being very, very tasty. Right. Um, but I'm still going to give it a, a like that. So a welcome visitor, right? Right off the bat here, which is good. Um, we needed them. Yeah, yeah. Let's do the uh, little hard candy next. This is the... What is this thing called? The, the Canro? M- milk of Canro candy. It's called Milk of Canro, which I, not a name I would guess because it basically, it's a little tiny ball and the outside of it looks like those like kind of old fashioned hard candies that old people are known to have in bowls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> old people are well known to have them. Hard candies and bowls just you follow old people around. Yeah. Like, my my grandparents had those, I remember, when I was young. Mm-hmm. They're, like, not wrapped in anything, and they take, like, an hour to get through. Mm-hmm. My mom always has a bowl, when I go over to her place, a bowl of York peppermint patties just out oh, on the man. counter. That sounds amazing. I'd come to your house all the time, your mom's yeah. house, I mean. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> no peppermint patties here. What the fuck are you talking I don't want to go to your house at all. No. Yeah, I don't have um, bowl one of peppermint patties. I go over there, you're taking two hours to take a piss. I don't yeah. <laughs> I'm not even able to see you. <laughs> the only thing I'm filling bowls with at my house, <laughs> you can finish that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> what does this taste what is like? this flavor? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I want to say butterscotch, but not really. It's a little butterscotchy, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking. Not bad. It's just hard to place. It's like a weak, weak butterscotch. Yeah. I agree, though. Butterscotch is the closest thing I would place it to. 
Oh, he's spitting it out. He's spitting well, it out. this is going to take me an hour and a half to eat this fucking thing. Yeah. All right. Chad, you ready to rate? Yeah. <sighs> this isn't a form factor that I super love. I actually bit through it because I was hoping maybe there was like a soft, creamy center, you know, like something like that. It can usually be pretty fun where you get through the hard outside and there's like a little surprise in the middle. Unfortunately, that's not there. It is just this hard candy all the way through. And I would get pretty bored of eating this. Um, I mean, this candy's <laughs> I should probably stop saying stuff like this, but this candy's only going to last me like two, maybe three pisses total. Um, <laughs> that's how long it's going to take me to get there. No, but uh, yeah. And, the, and like I said, the flavor is just, it's just, it tastes like a Werther's original kind of thing to me, but like maybe a little bit more mild. Uh, it's very whatever. I think I'm just going to go like maybe like a an indifferent to that, maybe a low level indifferent to that. Okay. Um, a regular butterscotch, like a Brax butterscotch candy is a love for me. I really like butterscotch. And I'm not a huge hard candy person. And I don't even like butterscotch like topping on an ice cream or something like that. I just kind of like it in hard candy form. Where there's... I agree, Chad, might be a decent comparison because it's a little tamer and that's not as good as a stronger butterscotch to me. But I'm still enjoying it because it is one of the few hard candy flavors that I really, really like. So I am going to give it a like that. Um, Geiger, where are you at? I'm indifferent in general to butterscotch, although I do don't. I do kind of like a nice Werther's. Um. But this, it's almost like, and I, maybe my head's fixating on the title, but like, I, it almost tastes like a butterscotch mixed with like cream, which maybe that's like the milk of whatever. Um, Canro. Of Canro, yeah. It's, if it was a milk of like, I don't know, Sockville, Wisconsin, maybe I'd like it, but Canro. <laughs> right. uh, inferior dairy. No, I think it's fine. I don't think it's awesome. I think it's, it's pleasantly sweet. And I'll keep it in my mouth for a while. I don't like, the, the, the flavor's pleasant. It's like a, it's, you know, it's essentially like a watered down butterscotch candy. So I think I'll give it an indifferent to that. If it was more of an intense flavor, I'd probably like it a little bit more. But as it is, it's, it's hard to get up too upset or too excited either way about something like this. All right. I know my in the lead, but the uh, fettuccine gummies still to come. So we'll see how it finishes out. Geiger, what you got for us today? All right, guys. It's winter time. a big old notebook. I got a big old <laughs> notebook. It's winter time, right? What are some of the things you associate with winter? Fall foliage. <laughs> I was just going to say that you beat me to <laughs> <laughs> But, well, Christmas. Um, Christmas. Snow, snow people. Snow people. Ice. Ice. What? Well, ice. You're under something there, Novak. Cats uh, hiding inside of my car's engine. <laughs> Frost giants. <laughs> luring homeless people out with strips of meat. Uh, no one. one. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. the wall. <laughs> All right. Here's a segment about one one. No. Um, on ice. What do you do on ice? You play hockey, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. I do. Yeah, that's the only. You thing. sure do. We're the three of us <laughs> as fucking hockey heads, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, no jack shit enough. about it. However, we don't need to know anything about hockey. What we need to know is which of these NHL mascots could beat each yes. other in a fight. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to do the NHL tournament. We did the NFL tournament before. This is the NHL tournament. Um, this is the one people have been clamoring for. <laughs> people man. just ringing me constantly. What about the hockey? That's we, what have so <laughs> many, we have so many Canadian downloads. Just... <laughs> yeah. Wait, did, is Winnipeg still called the Jets? <laughs> because if they are, then we're in for another Jet uh, discussion. We'll get there. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I decided split this into two parts. Yes. So I decided to take none of the teams out this time because why not? Let's just let it all hang loose. I'll let mm-hmm. you guys again. You, the two of you need to determine which in each of these matchups would win in a physical contest, like one unit of each thing, and then I'll be the tiebreaker if you both go separate ways. Uh, we're gonna get try to get through the entire Western Conference uh, this week. It's sixteen teams, so I guess. Hopefully we can get a Western Conference champion, and then we'll, we'll, we can do the the finals uh, in the next uh, couple weeks now from now. But 
if we run long, uh, long on time, we can figure it out. So, all right, we'll just censor ourselves by not talking about any of the animal mascots' penises. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we we gotta keep our rankings up in the dick content. Yeah. So, all right, uh, <laughs> dick content. Yeah, <laughs> dick that's category. The, I mean, that's what the iTunes rankings are called. <laughs> the dick contest. All right, number one, penises versus chodes. Now, all right. <laughs> Number one in the Western, we're going to start in the in the central of the Western Conference. And I, again, I know no, jack shit about actual hockey. Um, number one, the one seed, the Predators. Now, the Predators in this context is uh, it's the Nashville Predators. They found the body or the remains, I should say, of a like a saber tooth tiger in Nashville. So, oh, so it's not like an Arnold Schwarzenegger predator. No, right. no, it is not. No, wow. it is a or a sexual predator. It's not one of those either. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's not strokes <laughs> the clown. Their, their mascot is just a guy with like glasses and a thin mustache and a white man. <laughs> I wish there wasn't the Catch a Predator episode where the guy oh. from the Predator from the, the movie Predators <laughs> came in. And Chris Hansen is like, "What are you doing there?" And he just blew a hole through Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a uh, one of the actual Nashville Predators comes into the house. What are you doing there? Uh, this is my new show to catch a predator. <laughs> I, I, I do want to see the predator, the Schwarzenegger predator, come walking into the house with like flowers and a bottle of wine. <laughs> it's just a funny visual. I was coming here to tell her to be safe about the internet. <laughs> <laughs> then why did you bring space condoms? Uh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, this is going to learn long over this bit. Okay, so Predators versus the eight seed Blues. Now, in this car- in this context, the the logo is like a musical note, so it is about yeah. the, the music genre of blues. So, who wins a saber tooth tiger versus that sweet hip happening blues? All right, even if <laughs> even if we give blues some kind of like manifestation, like right. a couple of blues players bb king versus or like a, a sentient musical note that can fly through the air and slice people open like a shuriken or something Ain't no sunshine when she's oh god like they're like slashing through his neck <laughs> even if we give it yeah even if we give it some musicians or something i don't think it's going to going to beat the predator so i'm going predator yeah yeah i mean t- t- saber two tigers are well known to love like a saxophone solo but uh i still think the tiger wins <laughs> okay Four or five. This is a tricky one. The four seed avalanche, the Colorado avalanche. So the, the, that could, I mean, I put it in the middle because it's not a sentient thing, but it's a difficult thing to defeat. I would think Mm -hmm. versus number five, (laughs) the Blackhawks, which will win because it's from Chicago. If if the last (laughs) tournament is any sort of uh, thing, but no. uh, So the Blackhawks, those, that is the, the, the native American (laughs) tribe of, of Blackhawk Indians. Hmm. Or Native Americans, I should say. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I mean, Avalanche is going to be so Avalanche could be easily defeated by any flying creature. If this was an right. actual hawk, like it, you know. But uh, there's probably not too many members of the Native American tribe, the Blackhawks, who back in the day experienced avalanches. Right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they, they have a lot of... The Andes Mountains or anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they probably would be uh, taken by surprise and shit their pants immediately. So I think I'm going to go avalanche. Uh, for okay. Very <laughs> 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 by snow. <laughs> yeah, unless it's like Black Hawk Down. Uh, chopper, I don't think it's going to get away from the avalanche. So uh, avalanche for the win. I was unsure if maybe like you could claim that the Blackhawks could create some sort of structure to survive the avalanche because once the avalanche is done, you win, right? But I mean, uh, assuming the avalanche starts like the second the like starting bell goes, yeah. you don't have time to build shit, right? right. That's that true. That's take true. You, out in five you just whip your tomahawk at it. <laughs> and that's it. Avalanche <laughs> might be pretty tricky. All right. The three versus six. Now the the three is the Minnesota Wild. So it's like the all the outdoors, the wild itself is what it was named after. God, hockey has some fucking shit now. It is very <laughs> wait till we get to the NBA. That's also difficult. Anyway, uh number six, the coyotes. Now the coyotes arguably belong in the wild. That's what they are, but I ranked the wild ahead because it's like the the environment in which the coyote exists. Mm-hmm. So can I, basically, can I can I? I guess we have this experiment now. Can a coyote 
exist in the wild without dying. It probably it might be able to, but we'll have to see. Um, into the wild. Who wrote that? Who wrote Into the Wild? I think Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, also Reese Witherspoon. I here's the thing. Like, okay, a uh, oh, a coyote is not going to be able to defeat the wild, right? Mm-hmm. Like over time, eventually, this will be a long match, fifteen years, however long Cody, coyotes live, but eventually they will die. I think the only thing that's beating a wild is like a human mascot who could come in and like burn the forest down or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to go with the wild here. All right. So this is the I Cincinnati know. arsonists. I don't win. think, I don't think the coyote dying is <laughs> the wild defeating it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Unless they're playing against like the, you know, the uh, Arizona father times or something. You know, I think, that, <laughs> I think into the wild was written by John Krakauer. He defeated the wild, mm-hmm. wrote a book about it. So I think a coyote is eating, is surviving off the wild, using it up. Mm. Uh, so I'm taking coyote. So yeah, um, Geiger's coyotes haven't you. written oh. any books that I know of. So. I get, <laughs> Wiley Coyote wrote uh, War and Peace, right? <laughs> um, okay. The fact that the coyote exists in the wild maybe lean has me leaning toward it winning. However, the... Eventually, I do think the wild probably wins because like a bigger animal eats it or like the winter comes and it can't survive. So I am going to take. Fuck. I am going to take <laughs> the wild. The wild. I think I think it just I think you just described too... all the reasons the wild should win. I then... think so. Yeah, I just think it's too <laughs> difficult for the uh, like the coyote to exist outdoors. I think Chad's right. Maybe it might take some human ingenuity or or an in the next round. It could take on the two seed. A star, the Dallas Stars. Now, granted, the Dallas Stars used to be located in Minnesota where they were named the North Stars. So I guess in theory, we're talking about the North Star itself, which I don't. It could be like a celebrity, too, though. It it could be like Avril Lavigne. Yeah, I guess you're right. Versus. That's a a celebrity. celebrity I don't know. I don't know. I was thinking of Canada (laughs) hockey Um, versus our old friend, a jet. Now, I made the Jet the seventh seed as an mm-hmm. overcorrection because I ranked them so high last time. And you guys all shit all over the Jet and be like, it's a nerd. I can't do anything. Yeah, it's, it's just going to like. human will take it apart. If it's already, if you assume the Jet's already flying, it's just going to immediately crash and then lose. Or if the Jet's on the ground, it's just going to sit there. But here's what <laughs> I'll say. is in the air and you go, go Jet. And it suddenly has to control itself and just plummets to earth. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to tip my hand here, but I don't mm-hmm. see how anything is beating a fucking star. Right, like you throw a jet into the sun, the jet loses. Who did that? (laughs) Well, did you fly it? I think like Superman three. Didn't they throw a bunch of jets into the star or something uh... like that? (laughs) (laughs) No, no. But Chad, to be fair, your argument against jet is humans can figure out how to take it apart. Isn't your argument against star a human can figure out how to destroy a star? What? They can. <laughs> what if we launched a bunch of nukes into a star? We haven't done it yet, Wait, but it probably could blow it up. Nothing. <laughs> nothing would happen. No. Are you what? No? Let's tw- let's uh, tweet that at Neil deGrasse Tyson and see what you can <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. well, Humans dismantling a star. Uh, also, please say something about dick so we need dick categorization <laughs> and, and algorithm. Uh, yeah, okay. no, I mean, look, stars? obviously the star is not sentient or whatever, but if you just put the star, the star is now in the stadium, yeah. right? Like it is just immediately <laughs> rip, burning <laughs> apart a, everything. It starts shooting on the stadium while it melts away <laughs> everything around it. Um, so I think in this case, I'm going to have to take star. Now, if stars were Avril Lavigne. Mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of confidence in her ability to take apart a jet. So I might still <laughs> no. take the jet. No. But um, I, oh. I will say if you just – there are two objects that can't move on their own. Right. So if we just fling them straight at each other, <laughs> it's going to sure. work. That's fair. So it's dark. I think okay. the only thing Avril Lavigne knows how to dismantle is the emotional feelings of uh, skater boys. That's probably right. <laughs> right. probably not as <laughs> probably not as valuable at the end at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. All right, so we'll now head to the Pacific Division do the first round. So we got the the one seed, one of my favorite maybe my new favorite sports team name ever, the Kraken. This is the new uh, expansion team in Ooh. Seattle, I believe. Very cool. The Kraken, the legendary sea monster with like mm-hmm. multiple tentacles and like a huge dick. 
Yeah, it's their first year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, release the Kraken. It's right there. Does that count as talking about an animal stick? I think you walk. Kraken's not a human. I don't know. It's like kind of like an octopus. Yeah. We did. We did get a bunch of animal uh, dick karma when we spent a bunch of time focusing on uh, behemoth stick. Remember that? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah if we move song. into an even more niche mythical creature dick category. <laughs> Wait till we get to the third snack where it says Buffalo Dick. No, I'm kidding. Uh, all right. Eight Buffalo's seed. a mythical creature. <laughs> I didn't. Okay. We're talking animals, not just mythical no, creatures. No, no, no. We've moved okay. on. Oh, okay. All right. Wyvern well, or get the fuck out. In the NFL tournament, we did talk about how Titans were disqualified because they shoot lasers out of their dicks. So we're <laughs> all covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Good point. Good point. All right. Uh, eight seed against the Kraken. They're adorable. They're lovely. They're tasty. But I have a hard time seeing how a duck. The Anaheim Ducks are going mm. to be able to win. Now, it is an actual duck. Originally, they're the Mighty Ducks, named after the Disney movie, but they've since changed it to simply the Ducks. They're, they're not even Mighty anymore, yeah. Right, they're, they're just they're regular ass Ducks. Any, um, any way you slice that, that's uh, an easy one for the Kraken. We don't have to right. spend too much time there. Yeah, it's a slam duck, Kraken. Yeah. Kraken. <laughs> Four, Sharks versus five, Kings. So, it's uh, not a bad one. Now, by king, we don't mean Arthur Curry, a.k.a. Aquaman, a.k.a. King of the Sea, because that would be an, a, a very easy win. I didn't think you meant that. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to Which, what, Who do we mean? A, a, your average king, like a, like king a medieval <laughs> king. Your average run of the day king. <laughs> well, I'm not talking about like Prince Charles or whoever, or King Charles or fucking, you know, like the current kings. I mean, like the old school medieval king with like a uh, ruled an army of knights and whatever all right um a lot of the kings back then were warriors too in their own right. yeah but those kings they didn't have the technology that they have today i think if it was a modern day king i might take that a modern <laughs> all t- the modern day kings that walk around with like uzis and yeah. the nuclear <laughs> king walking codes. out with a sniper rifle and just <laughs> murking the shark in the water <laughs> but i'm just when i'm picturing this shark i'm thinking it of like the shark from the hit jason statham movie the meg um <laughs> No, that's a megalodon. That's a prehistoric uh-huh. shark. That's not what we're talking about. It's not what they were named. A regular ass shark, like a like a great white shark versus a king. All yeah. right, fine shark. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like King Arthur, even with his like big Excalibur or whatever. I think Jaws is still going to win, so I'll go shark. All right, that's an interesting second round matchup, which we will get to in a bit. Uh. <laughs> All right, the five. Oh, I'm sorry, the three seed, Golden Knight. This is a uh, the last um, expansion team to have the Las Vegas Golden Knights versus six Oilers, which I just assume means oil men, like oil workers. Knight so. K N I, like uh, another medieval warrior. Yes, or yes, yes. the actual a, night time. A gold no, <laughs> a golden <laughs> period in which we all sleep. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, Golden Knight is in like a medieval warrior versus oil workers. Oh boy. Now again, yeah. to Pernovac's point, maybe the oil workers have like Uzis from modern technology <laughs> that can defend against like the sh- chain mail of the night, but So the one thing that you need to move around all that armor is it needs to be lubed up and oiled up, right? You can't just <laughs> We've all seen Wizard of Oz. If there's no oil can, <laughs> the they... Tin Knight was a or the Tin Man was a golden knight. Yeah, classic <laughs> so the original golden knight. Golden knight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Scarecrow was a king. <laughs> and I think because of that factor... And the Cowardly gonna... Lion had a huge dick. Anyways, go. <laughs> <laughs> because of that... <laughs> if I only had a dick. <laughs> He's like walking around just swinging around. You remember the climax of that movie where they... He's like, I am the great and powerful wizard. And he jumps into like... Opens up the hood of a car and <laughs> leaps in there. <laughs> 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 Um, I'm, I'm going to take, because the knight needs the oil and the mm-hmm. oilers can withhold it. I'm going to take the oilers. The oilers think, can withhold it. I don't think knights need oil. Like, it's not like, it's not like Daniel Plainview was running around medieval times, like owning all the knights because he like controlled <laughs> the oil. Like, that's not how that works. The knight has a weapon, right? Like the, mm-hmm. the, the best the oil man can do is like throw a bucket of oil on him and like hope there's a spark 
or something. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm gonna go the knight. So break the tie guy. Yo, Vang, I'm very curious. Mm-hmm. When you have needed motor oil for your car or like cooking oil for your so do you go directly to an oil man that's the only because <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> apparently the night's only source that's being withheld is by this one subsect of employee of the <laughs> of industry G- you know? geiger can or novak can only deep fry when he's at when he's at like uh what's that called like deep horizon or whatever that <laughs> yeah. oil well is. talking to the oilman's guild to barter for enough oil to get through the year uh, see, so this is Golden Knight. Your milkshake. Yeah, no, he drinks it up. Yeah, no, I think I Golden Knight. With your cat this. on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> and then after he's done shitting, he's like, "I'm done now," or whatever. <laughs> what does he say at the end of that movie? <laughs> Something like that. Done shitting. All right, uh, Golden Knights <laughs> wins that one, and then the last matchup in the first round, number two, Flames. So the reason they were named the Flames, uh, this is the Calgary Flames. Originally, they were they were started in Atlanta, perfect hockey town, and they, they were named after the flames from the fire that like General Sherman set on his march like during the the war down to like the Gulf. So it's it is actual wow, fire flame, yeah, kind of horrific. Dumb. <laughs> uh, it makes a ton of sense now that they are based in Canada um, versus Canucks, which is. A Canadian, a Canadian person. So connect uh, the Vancouver Canucks. This is an all Canada matchup. Can a regular ass Canadian person defeat a fire? Essentially, is what this, we're talking about. It's too bad it's not versus the Oiler because the Oiler could withhold the source of the fire's right. flames. Right. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, I think I think the the Canuck is going to burn to death here. Let's go flames. Oh, I'm going to disagree. I, you know, they're used to they're living in, in a cold environment. I think mm. they uh, are. They've come up with ways to put fires out when they. When they arise, I think a, a human can put the fire out. So I'm going to go with the Canucks. That's, that's actually a really good point. You I'm, swayed me, Novak. I, when yeah, I seeded them, I too. thought flame was more destructive. And I thought of like the wildfires where we still, you know, we're humans, but we still can't put them out somehow. But but Canadians he, can put their wildfires out all the time. So Canadians no are fine. They got it all figured out. Um, <laughs> and, and again, we're talking more, more of a contained, like we're not asking this Canuck to defeat the entire, like h- half of the state of California on fire. This is a contained fire. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll give them that. All right. Quickly, we'll move through the second round then. So back up to the top, we got the Predators versus an Avalanche. So a saber-toothed tiger versus an Avalanche, which is kind of sort of a repeat of what happened in the past, right? I mean, the Ice Age is sort of a little <laughs> bit kind of like that. But Yeah, again, like, I th- it's, it's, it's going to be tough to beat the Avalanche. Like, I think a bird could easily do it, but a tiger can't fly. So uh, I'm going to go Avalanche here. That is really tough. I don't. How big is a saber tooth tiger? It's a big one. Uh, I don't think it would fit on your lap while you're taking a piss. <laughs> yeah, I'll okay, look up your avalanche. Saber tooth. Okay, <laughs> I was like, I'll look it up if you want. All right, so avalanche advances. Wild versus a star. Hmm. So again, kind of so, both environmental things. <laughs> so we're speeding up global warming here by introducing the star directly to the wild. <laughs> speeding it up. <laughs> it will now take one second. <laughs> um, I mean. Oh, boy. It's too bad Golden Knight wasn't the actual knight, because that might be the only thing that can beat a star. <laughs> Uh, so star, I think I'm gonna go. So star. star only is present in the night. Well, it's not. Pre- it's present the rest of the time. It's the only time you can see it, I guess. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Ooh, I, th- I think I gotta go start. This okay. One. So we'll wrap up that top half real quick. Star versus avalanche. This is the one versus the two. Hmm, I'm sorry. This is an, the four versus the two. Could an avalanche extinguish the sun? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. A lot of steam coming off. There. Let's say theoretically, there's enough snow, a, a sun amount of snow, <laughs> and theoretically, you could <laughs> dump it on the star, on the sun. Mm-hmm. I'm still not certain it would. Put, I don't think it would even get close to putting the sun out. So, <laughs> considering the sun is a like bunch of nuclear reactions <laughs> all happening at the same time. Um, so we're so we're talking about avalanche versus star. The star being a sun, not uh, Avril Lavigne. 
Uh, no. <laughs> cut that out. Okay, so. <laughs> Bruce Ville Avalanche. <laughs> I was trying to, the I beginning couldn't. of her name starts with AV. <laughs> <laughs> Avalanche Levine. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> All right, Avalanche Levine is winning. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Wait, what? Avalanche? The star. Levine? Okay. The star. star. Oh, all right. Okay. Down to the bottom. This the, is the now... two are fusing together to form Avalanche <laughs> Levine. It's like a bunch of stars hurling down a mountain at you. I'm looking for excuses for the star to lose. I know. It's hard to do on yeah. that one. I yeah. t- almost took it out, almost like similar to Giant or Titan. I just felt like, you know, you, first of all, you guys kind of complained I took them out. I think I can't. Remember we always come up with the various reasons yeah. why something could lose. So we'll that's see. what I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wanted to be creative. All right. So in the bottom half, we've got Kraken versus Shark, a battle for supremacy in the sea. Um, what do we got now? Who has a bigger dick real quick? Kraken or Shark? <laughs> Boy, Lambo it, wants to know. Lambo's got something to say about that. Kraken, you Kraken, Mom's trying to make me watch your shit. <laughs> so, um, look, I I watched the last twelve minutes of the Mag last week. Yeah. All right. It was a big shark. Big impression no. on you. This is the second time it's come out. <laughs> really blowing. You know that wasn't a documentary, right? <laughs> I saw the very end, and it was defeated by a couple of people. <laughs> you only saw the very end? You didn't watch the whole movie? <laughs> no. I saw the end. Uh-huh. Spoiler alert. The Meg is defeated. Yeah. It was defeated by oh. Jason Statham and a couple of other actors. Mm-hmm. So... If those people can beat him, then the Kraken can easily. So I'm going Kraken. Yeah, the, I mean, the Kraken, it's like gigantic, all kinds of tentacles. Like, it can easily just squish Ooh. the Meg to death. Yeah, okay. Um, bottom half, Golden Knight versus Canuck. I don't think we have to debate this one too long, probably. Yeah, yeah Knight. Go, go Knight. Knight's yeah. going to win. The uh, Canuck has nothing to withhold. Uh, okay. <laughs> so Kraken versus Golden Knight, I guess well, it's... The Kraken was defeated, right, by Sam Worthington. <laughs> uh, yeah. some, some Greek warrior, right, beat the Probably. Kraken. Uh, so <laughs> Lambo's not putting up with my bullshit. It's dinner time, sorry. <laughs> um, but I think just a regular night, it's going to be tough. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go uh, Kraken still, I think. Yeah, I think cra- the Kraken Star matchup was destined from the start. The old Kraken Star. Uh, <laughs> all right. In, in one corner, we have the mighty Kraken, ruler of the oceans. Scourge Let's leave of the that sea. one. Let's leave the final four. You want to leave it? Okay. Yeah, so it'll we'll, give us some, some right. uh, time to think. think. Yeah. So. <laughs> Time to research how, how so big is Star's go. dick. <laughs> watch, uh, what the fuck movie was he in? Clash of the Titans. Clash, Clash of the Titans. Titans. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can watch Sunshine. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah, so next time it'll be Star vs. Kraken when we tackle the other, the Eastern Conference of the NHL. All right. Tune in in three weeks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Edge of your seat. All right, time to eat some fettuccine gummies. So the company is, where is it? Bourbon, uh, just spelled like the bourbon that we drink, and then fettuccine gummies, Amao Strawberry, M-A-A-M-A-O-U. And it, was that the same flavor that we had for the Kit Kats? I think yeah, it's, right. a, it's yeah. like a type of Japanese strawberry, or like it's from a certain region or something like that. They're almost like this the same, like, Construction is a Sour Patch Kid. They're just not that sour. It's like that gummy with like the crunchy sugar on the outside. Yeah. Sugar covering it, but it's a long, uh, not too long, but it's more of a long, flat noodle shape. I mean, yeah. Fettuccine name. Shaped like a fettuccine noodle, but like shorter, right? Only like an inch or two long. It is a little tart, right? Yeah. For sure. The inside tastes uh, like almost more liquidy. Than some gummies do. Yeah. It's softer. And I just put a whole one in my mouth. It almost felt like there could have been like juice or something inside of it. Um, but the cross section shows that it's just your standard gummy. But yeah, kind of tart. This is a tough one. Mm-hmm. This is very tough. 
I don't know why they call this bourbon, unless it's like a different translation type thing. There's really no bourbon flavor. I they're not they're not bad, and I could see eating a couple at a time, but they get old fast. The strawberry flavor is, I think, too much. It's like too much with because it's you know it's not a real strawberry flavor. It's just the fake generic candied strawberry flavor, and they went uh, they went too far in it. I think it's definitely my least favorite thing of the day. And I'm probably not going to go back and eat many of these. I'll probably just give these to my kids who are very excited when they saw the package. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to end up giving this a high level and different to that, which is going to kind of make it tough for uh, it to pull out the win, but it's still possible. Geiger? I'm going to disagree with you a bit. I like strawberry as a candy flavor and you're right. Like it's a lot of strawberry flavor, but I like that flavor. And I think the gummy is a pleasant consistency. It's not super hard. It's not like like a squishy fruit snack. It's kind of right there in the middle. Um, it's not overly tart, but it's, like Chad said, it's got enough tartness to where it's it's not just super sweet either, which is often something I have a hard time with with these candies. Um, I think it's good. It's not. It's nothing. It's no like doing cartwheels in the street or anything like that. But I like this definitely better than the Canro. And I would probably put it behind the chocolate pie. So I'm going to give it a solid like that. I think it's good. Okay. So it's still in the race here. If Chad loves these, then we're going to end up with a tie. Otherwise, um, our first snack, <laughs> which was oh, the Pino Mai <laughs> chocolate pies, <laughs> is going to win. <laughs> Chad? I think I'm I'm right in line with Geiger, Geiger there. I would slot these in between the Pino Mai, but ab- above that hard candy. I think I'd like these better in a different flavor. You know, the the, the fake strawberry just is, is not totally perfect. I think lemon would work better. I know I say that all the time. But even like orange, I think would be better here. Um, but it's, it's still pretty good. You know, eating these reminds me that like how much higher quality... I feel like uh, Japanese snacks in general are like even ones that I don't think are great. Like this is probably five times better than like whatever the equivalent that some U S manufacturer would make. Right. Like just the quality of the, uh, I don't know about the quality of the ingredients, whatever, but for some reason it just tastes like sort of like a little bit better in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, But it is still a very low level like that for me because I I think it's just a little bit too tart, but I like the form factor and stuff. Yeah. All right, so that uh, does mean that Pino Mai has won the day, and maybe deservingly, because uh, we all we all really like that one with three likes, a welcome visitor. Uh, it's not a bad showing, actually, because we didn't have a single uh, dislike given today. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a good start. Good, good. Portends a, a good future. Geiger, where can the listeners contact us? If you have thoughts on our tournament, if you maybe one time battled a Kraken or have withheld oil from someone and you can tell how effective it was, if you've got a plan for defeating a star, let us know. We don't mean Avril Lavigne. Uh, we mean an actual a celestial we mean body. Avalanche. We need Avalanche Lavigne. Um, <laughs> we, if you are really tired of hearing about animal dicks, we are sorry. It's just about the algorithm. This is all about keeping the podcast viable. So save your hate mail for someone else. Um, if you want to weigh in on our question, though, if, if I know we've got some um, very, very big cat fans or cat lovers in, in the listener pool, um, thinking specifically around my family, uh, if you think what uh, my wife did was odd, uh, feel free to just land based her on all social media platforms. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Don't do that. But, you know, reach out. Let me know if you think that was kind of a bizarre behavior. Um, otherwise, uh, you can find all of our podcast stuff at it at gmail.com. You can let us know uh, what you think. Suggest a question for the mailbag. Give us a review. Suggest a snack. Do all that kind of stuff. Uh, we are also on Twitter. Hashtag it that. We have a Facebook group. You tried that. We are on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, we're also available anywhere, really, you listen to your podcasts. If you could, you know, we'd love it if you could leave us like a, a review on iTunes or uh, some stars and, and let, let people know what you think, if you like it, right? Um, and also, uh, please feel free to let any of your friends and family know if you think it's funny, uh, if they have a tolerance for animal dicks for an hour, 
uh, just let us know and uh, well, don't let us know. Let them know about the podcast. <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> just tell us. We'll, we'll reach out personally. <laughs> Leave <laughs> disgusting voicemails on their phones. <laughs> Check out this owl's dick and then just hang up. Um, no, just let us know or let the fucking a let let them know about the podcast and have them listen. Sorry, I can't do this anymore. Uh, I appreciate your help and we appreciate your listenership. And uh, yeah, um, hopefully this year will be. Better for snacking all around. All right. So according to the internet, um, the average Kraken, I didn't know there was a bunch of them, but the, the average, average Kraken, Kraken is about 100 feet in length. Mm-hmm. All right. It's pretty mm-hmm. big. Right? Yeah. And weighed 4,000 pounds. Large. It's large. Pretty big. Mm-hmm. Um, but unfortunately, was a grower and not a shower. So I think that's going to be <laughs> All that shrinkage from being in the water. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you need to uh, think about that. <laughs> and according to the internet, a star is big as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but very tiny cock. Very right. small, small penis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> In case you need to think about that. Like, no. <laughs> I, I actually do. We can talk about it next time, but I have a case for Kraken over star. Okay. All right. All right. A little tease. Oh, mm-hmm. come on back in three weeks. Everybody. <laughs> in three weeks, we can be <laughs> cracking into that conversation. All right. Are you guys going to be in a hockey game? Nope. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> <All right>. no. <laughs> How many seconds until I face plant on the ring? Yeah, Two. I can't even ice skate. <laughs> Do you think you'd even get that badly hurt because you're not even like move you're you're not moving at a fast enough speed that, that you know you're gonna be getting checked I'm, even into the wall? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna like get into the way of people that it comes right. skating by these huge hulking like you know these big. Canadian dudes are just going to smash me over and I'm going to like hit my head on the ice and crack it open probably. So yes, I will get hurt. <laughs> they wear helmets. <laughs> <laughs> you realize all fall these guys so fall hard. over sometimes. <laughs> I'm going to fall so hard that I'm going to crack right through the helmet. <laughs> this guy just skates through chat and he explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Falls through the ice and down. There's like, there wasn't even water under there. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I'll get hurt. I mean, look, we get hurt playing softball, and it's like a very low-contact old man sport. I'll be sore from skating. I'll be sore from getting smashed into dem boards. I'll probably lose a tooth or two. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to hurt. How good is your skating ability? Like, if I just gave you a 100-yard straight bit of ice and you had to skate one into the other, could you get a good speed going up, or are you just going to be, like, shuffling the entire way? It will take me like four Chad pisses to get down to the end. I, I think I could because I did. I did. I you know it's been like twenty years since I ice skated, but I was a halfway okay ice skater. Right. Well, you so took a class to meet since, a girl. Yeah. Right. Since I took I took ice skating to meet a girl in college. Um. So I feel like that would come back to me like after a little bit, and I, and I can roller skate a little bit, but again, I haven't done it in like a decade, so yeah. I might fall a couple times first, but. Come back to me eventually. I, I'm I'm terrible. My my ankles go like this. I can't do it. I don't enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I would slowly I, waddle down there. I could pick up some speed. Like I can get moving because I skated a bit as a kid, um, and now and then as an adult. But it's the turn, like it's the stopping yeah. and turning that is the bigger issue for me. Well, you're also yeah, gonna be wearing sure. all that bulky gear, though, right? So that might be more a little different, right? Too. And we're gonna look like a little kid who got. Like a hockey costume for his birthday. <laughs> costume. Not even a co- hockey like gear. Just, you're like cosplaying as a hockey player from Party City. I got my Wayne Gretzky mask on. I can't see shit. <laughs> now, right. do I get a knife like Jason? Like I get the hockey mask and the knife. I can defend myself against these hockey players. Like, come on, I stab them. Jason doesn't skate it. Does he skate at any point in any of the movies? I thought he was like the second leading scorer in the NHL the year the movie came out. <laughs> it was like Wayne Gretzky had I'm enough. about Jason snapped. Smith from the Blackhawks. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knifed through the defense and scored lots of goals. Wasn't Jason the original skater boy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 all right. Well, let's call it there. Um, 
good start to 2022. We'll be back next time. We're trying out three brand new things. Yep.